Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Jessica Brody and this is Shining the Light. I have always loved kids and one of my favorite things about children is their really innocent, open view of the world. You know, they're not yet jaded by things. They've not yet been taught to fear or to hate or anything like that. You know, they have this outlook I think that is so beautiful. I personally try to hold on as much as I can to that. That is one of the things I like best of the, of the world is just being able to look at things with fresh eyes and, and try to see things through the lens of a child. And I love in Matthew 18, you know, Jesus appreciates children too. You know, not only I think because they are the humblest of the humble. I mean, in that society at that time, children were virtually worthless. You know, they represented the future of society, but they were to be seen and not heard. You know, their opinions were not necessarily valued. And yet today, as a mom, I always ask my kids, well, what do you think? What would you like to do for dinner? What are you in the mood for? It's not that they run the house, but I'm curious, what are they interested in? Only because they could give me a new perspective. You know, they might think of something I haven't thought of. And it doesn't mean we're gonna do what they say, but I like getting their point of view. And I think Jesus did that too, you know, and he said in, in Matthew 18, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. You know, their innocence and their perspective and their humble status is something that Jesus appreciated. Um, and we know that he did this in, in other aspects of society too. It's not just children. He would dine with tax collectors and prostitutes and other people who were looked down upon. The least became the greatest. The greatest became the least. And I'll say that that perspective for me a lot of times we in our society tend to rely on all these so-called experts to tell us how things are done. We read self-help books from people who have it together seemingly because we think they could maybe show us the way. But we forget that God shows us the way and Jesus tells us sometimes the children show the way. See, when we humble ourselves like children, when we look at the world through a childlike perspective, I think we gain a lot of wisdom through that innocence and through that humility. So this week, I wanted to share something with you that my daughter wrote. And I really love reading children's writing. And my daughter wrote this when she was 10 years old. And I don't remember seeing it before, but we were cleaning out her bedroom, preparing for back to school. And she said, oh, mom, did I ever show you this? And it was from her fifth grade class. She's 12 now, so this was two years ago. And she pulls it out and she said, can I read it to you? And apparently the teacher had shown them Vincent van Gogh's wheat field with cypresses and told them about the painting and had them take a look at it and really reflect on it and then write something that brought the landscape to life. And so this is what she wrote. So I'd like to read this to you because her work and the work of most children when they write things, it captures something so pure. And to me, this particular work captures not only the sadness and the longing, that I see in the painting, but also the way that all these things are, are juxtaposed against this, this vibrant color scheme that, that Van Gogh used. You know, all these swirling colors and then this sadness, it just creates really, to me, a fascinating dichotomy. And, and when I asked Avery about it, she said, I guess I just wanted to say something good about God and the world he created. 
She said, sometimes things are hard, but we can look around us and bask in all that beauty and sometimes feel better. Those are wise words from someone so young. Now, Avery did not want to be on camera, but she gave me permission to share her words with you. So I'd like to read them to you. And I'm reading this as you look at Van Gogh's painting. So as you listen to the words, soak in the scenery, just let God open your heart to what he's trying to do here. Wheat Field with Cypresses in Overwhelming Beauty by Avery Connor. A quiet afternoon comes, the view surprising me. I open my tired eyes, looking at the different shades of color. Calm clouds fill the sky, no sound, almost as if their mouths were locked so tightly they couldn't open. Big smoky mountains lie in rows like crowded toys on a shelf, wanting to get out, wanting to have an adventure, but they can't, they can't move, almost like they're glued. Bushes stick out, some soft, some spiky, behind them lay tufts of grass, hiding, scared to come out into the scary world. It's so delicate, so fragile, one touch, one life lost. Tall trees stand, wanting a place in the world, but everything controls it. The wind shakes it, forcing it back and forth, back and forth. When rain comes, the tree has no protection, nowhere to go. The wheat field, so beautiful, always swaying side to side. The colors, gold and brown, blend together like colors on an artwork piece. So beautiful, but always squished and stiff. A bed of flowers stands, so tiny, but so bold. The flowers seem so unreal, but they aren't. The beauty of everything overwhelms me, but at the same time, it relieves me away from everything stressful, away from everything bad, but no negativity today. Today is so free, free, such a wonderful world. I leave you with that. And if you have some children in your life, whether they're your own children or grandkids or nieces or nephews or kids on your block, kids at your church, kids in some sphere of your life, I urge you to talk to them and ask them about what do they think of, of this painting or what do they think of what's going on with, with school and politics. And almost always they have a wisdom that teaches me something. It's a wisdom of innocence and purity. They see things sometimes that I don't see. It's as though my age blinds me, but they see better than I do. Anyway, that's all for this week, everybody. God bless you. Have a great week and keep on shining the light.